just making sure that uh, you know we're going to record this bit okay for, for the markets just so you can have a little bit of a uh, uh, a look at it it's a uh, it, it's a case of right what's been going on here uh, where, as i said some people some people will be in some denial some people will be in uh, uh, areas of that it's uh, uh, and it's a case of where we'll have a little look at um, we'll have a little look at these kind of particular markets. Hopefully, some of you saw uh, the video I put out last night. If you don't, uh, let me know and I'll send it on to you. Basically, I was just looking at the dollar yesterday, and uh, yeah, what a day for the dollar that was. Okay, that was quite something, and I'll touch on it a little bit in a moment. Okay, but we'll uh, we will particularly look at it. Okay, so uh, um, Tim has asked me there, uh, hi Paul, what do you think it would take for the markets to close? Uh, yeah, that's a great question. That's a great question, Tim. Um, do, do, do. I would, my personal consideration would be that if markets continue to free fall in the way that they have done, uh, yeah, yeah, a decision will be made about uh, about closing those markets. And it's a case of, uh, I'd be interested to see whether they will do it in a kind of in an orderly fashion, as in they'll just say, uh, "What will be Thursday? You know, maybe tomorrow." It'll be a case of right. We're just going to close the markets down for a week to give everybody a bit of a chance to. Uh, take a breather and get get a, a handle of it or uh, or whether you know or whether there will be resistance to that whether there'll be people will say that you know those markets are automated they, they could probably run themselves um, yeah I, I, I don't have a, I don't have a definitive answer to that uh, Tim if you think about it what I think would probably happen first is that I think there would probably be a um, uh, my own view would be is that there would probably be a ban on short selling. That's what will happen. It's it's coming to in Italy. If you if you notice the uh, the new Bank of England governor said yesterday that people shorting these markets should just stop it, which is just like it's just like a red flag to a you know, red rag to a bull. That isn't it really? It's just like a red rag to a bull. You know, it's it's the you know, and I think what we'll find is that there will probably be lots of people who will start to get into that kind of media bandwagon about uh, harassing short sellers. Uh, but the reason is, you know, the, 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 this market is getting shorted because, uh, you know, it was just, it was a bubble that was wafting along, all right, wafting along, wafting away there. And I, I, my view is that the virus has just, all it's done is just accelerate the end of the business cycle. That's all it's done is it's, it was going to come. This has just accelerated and, and exacerbated what were the particular problems. So I would expect to see a ban on short selling first, and then they might get to a point of, um, Ban onto a point on uh, selling, uh, closing markets rather. If they uh, if they don't if they don't respond, how politicians and central bank governors want them to. So um, yeah, watch this watch this space. Um, right. So I suppose the uh, kind of my uh, my kind of caveat for this is is a case of you know if if you are trading through these particular markets, well then it's a case of you'll have noticed already spreads have, uh, have widened. Right. So your stops should should widen as well considerably and also effectively your position size should be uh, reduced okay i appreciate that some people see these markets and think oh yeah i'm just going to lump it all on and you know this will be my chance to make a millionaire that is a possibility uh, that is a possibility but there is also an increasing probability that you know that you, you might get absolutely slammed for that okay uh, i have i have not heard of any stresses or strains in brokers you know in retail brokers yet that i'm aware of if you have please if you have heard something some different please let me know but i i haven't all right um i haven't as yet and um you know but it's a case of something could switch around here okay the uh, you know central banks okay politicians will be terrified they might come out with something just out of the blue all right okay to try and uh, do what they can to, to halt this which means that if you're you know if you're maxed out heavily short then you know you're going to get you're going to get absolutely you know destroyed pretty pretty rapidly so right so you know um, widen your widen your stop losses okay and and reduce your reduce your position size right i'll be saying that even almost you know it's a case of you know uh, trading the smallest position that you can get away with okay so if it is you know, if that if that means you're trading one micro lot okay then that's what you do all right it, this is not about um this is about survival right sap survive acquire possible this for most people this is about surviving through this particular uh, um shenanigans right not it's not about trying to uh, not about trying to make you great fortunes I, I have no doubt that some will be and i've no doubt there will be some institutions that are doing it but as private traders okay the, the the majority of you don't want to be trying to uh, trying to leverage this to 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 make the uh, you know to, to to make your millions okay so um so yeah so anyway listen you can see these all right you can see these markets as they are okay what have we got here indices okay Dow S and P five hundred Nasdaq 
Uh, that's the uh, uh, US bonds, DAX, okay, Nikkei, uh, Australian, and uh, the FTSE. Okay, um, uh, you know you don't you don't need to have been trading for two decades to see what the story is there. Okay, um, the kind of interesting thing is probably is that the bonds. Okay, so in terms of US Treasuries and also the bonds, um, they have actually come off as well. So everybody who thought they would just do well by just piling into the bonds and Treasuries. Um, they have not. They they've taken a bit of a they've taken a, a bit of a bath as uh, as well, um, uh, and you know you can look at that market there yourself. I, I I don't really see any particular reason there at this moment to to to, to be a buyer of those markets. Okay, now admittedly something might come out over the next day or two or over the weekend. Okay, is that uh, that might change that view, but at this moment. I know some people, you know, you look on social media, say you should be bottom fishing now, and this is the buying opportunity of a lifetime. Um, I, I know what my uh, I know what my risk reward uh, uh, profile is. Okay, so I, I personally prefer to let the market play its hand. All right, and and if that means that I give give back some reward to the market, um, that's fine. I can I can live with that. I'm not trying to I'm not trying to squeeze every every dollar out of a position. Uh, I'm actually quite happy to let the market play its hand and then try and get a little try and get a little bit of piece of that as the uh, as the as the market makes it as the market makes its move. I I do appreciate other people who would have perhaps more risk aggressive styles who might just want to just think yeah yeah Paul there we go buy this <clears throat> if you do well good luck to you um uh, but it wouldn't be it wouldn't be my way of uh, it wouldn't be my way of operating equally you know uh, I, I would be basically you know in terms of uh, if i was like taking shorts this afternoon i would be i would be a you know not nervous but i would effectively be just watching them like a hawk okay we've had you know uh, we've had real hard selling okay for the last couple of weeks um, and it's a case of you know that um, i think that uh, you know what we'll see is i think it will flatten out over the next day or two until there is until there is i personally i think until there is a kind of a bit of a, a, a social breakdown which which might happen next week we shall uh, we shall see it's uh, it, it's you know what we are in here for the first time is a kind of a fascinating environment where it, it's not only a uh, it's not only a markets issue but there, there is a social issue there in terms of what's going on so it's a case of you know it's like a double whammy i'm um, my own uh well let's say my own background my own background would lead me to to think and i've considered this that if this has if this has been a um if this has been a uh, let's say a, a state organized um attack um by somebody then they've done a fantastic job distract everybody on the social side with the with the virus whilst whilst you attack markets you know in the second wave and that's um that's fantastic you know to the to the effect that you actually bring your enemy down get your enemy on the knees before you even have to fire a shot that's quite some um yeah that's quite some that's quite some move but anyway that's what a more drastic view for another day perhaps um all we're interested in is looking at what's what's going on all right so um if i looked at uh, let me just i've got on this computer i've got a few uh, platforms right so yeah so even just looking at that so you know what, what i'm doing for myself is uh, in the morning so right just basically get up watch a bit of the news okay just see if there's any kind of major uh, major news announcements all right um so you know from last night we had uh, we had Lagarde all right at the EU okay so last week <laughs> last week she last week she got in trouble for saying that it wasn't her job to basically to uh, to to close bond spreads and then a week later last night she says i'm going to spend 750 billion of your euros trying to close bond spreads so um you know make of that what you will but uh um, from my limited understanding of that from that hasn't actually had much impact not much positive impact today okay so um you know you can look you can see the the uh, bonds there yourself but uh yeah in the morning get up look at what's ha happened overnight just take a look at you know whether there was actually um whether there was actually a bloodbath over the uh, over the asian session um <laughs> And then just start to have a plan identify some levels but be very very aware of them that they are how would i describe those levels at the moment they are the very soft levels all right the, the price can go through that like a knife so if you are if you're looking to buy a level or sell a level at this particular time i'd be very very wary of that ladies and gentlemen all right it's um once again once again, if there is a level, I, I personally prefer to see if it will hold and if there will be, if there will be some price action that supports that. Um, once again, I appreciate that. That means that I am giving up, I'm giving up uh, reward because I'm not not getting in at, at the best price. But once again, uh, in, in situations like this, I'm I'm happy to 
I'm happy to 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 do that. Okay, I'm happy to do that. But uh, in terms of uh, the uh, the good in terms of the good trends that are there, you know, it, it's a case of you just be looking for I you know just looking for pullbacks. Okay, one hour chart is fine. All right, one hour chart is saying it's looking for pullbacks on the uh, the one hour chart. Okay, providing that is it, is it giving you a a little bit of a uh, uh, you know a rally and a strong downtrend? That's a, that's an opportunity to that's an opportunity to to, to join there. Okay let some more of these people in hopefully you're uh hopefully you're all in hope you can all uh hopefully you can all see and uh hear me if we just look at uh you know dax okay i appreciate in the mornings there's some people who are pretty uh um uh pretty uh, uh excessive or rather aggressive dax traders okay you know it's just it's you know it's been one way traffic for the last uh for the last month but um that has been about looking about as i said just looking for when you know when you're getting pullbacks okay pullbacks into uh particular levels pullbacks into particular levels of dynamic resistance that that's the opportunity to take a to take a little to take a little short in there okay um i know as i said some people would be uh, uh some people might want to be trying to pick the buttons um uh, you know yeah that that you know as much as i like trading a reversal um i the, trying to pick buttons in this at the moment is is a bit of a you know, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a monk's game, I think. Okay, uh, and what will happen is you you'll you'll be wrong nine times, but then on that last time you'll be right, and then you'll you know you'll you'll think you're the you're the dog's bollocks. Okay, and that's fair enough, but um, that's not that's not really the way I like to that's not really the way I like to operate. Okay, so, um, <clears throat> so yeah, so um, uh, so yeah, so the the indices, you know, I, I don't think I don't think there's really anything new I can tell you there that you you couldn't see for yourself just by looking at it. Okay, it's just been one it's just been one way traffic. We've had a couple of days of just going sideways. Okay, but don't be in any kind of a don't be in, in any kind of a, a, what's the word um, a belief that that is that's the end of it. All right, I, I, I'm I'm yet to be convinced that it is the uh, i'm yet to be convinced that it's the the uh, the end of it i don't uh, i don't see that at, at the moment all right and um, what we have seen and i think i talked about this on the uh, the dollar video i did yesterday people is a case of what we'll see, what we've seen is you know markets drop and then they go sideways until the, the moving averages catch up with them and then drop again in the in the dollar and uh, we'll take just a very very quick let's take a very quick look at it on this one okay Yeah. So, um, you know, the kind of in terms of the big picture for me, well, the big picture is that that, that dollar is now way above 100 and it's above 102. And I'd kind of commented that, um, you know, I've been kind of led to believe from my understanding is that prices above 102 is going to cause all sorts of problems for emerging markets. If they weren't they weren't already struggling, this has just made it even worse. That all of a sudden has a big knock on impact if you start having like sovereign bonds start basically uh, um, start defaulting, sovereign nations defaulting, then, you know, that's. You know, we're into, we're into, you know, there will be a lot of burn from that. Okay, there will be an awful lot of burn, a lot of contagion from that. But you know, that might take, that might take a week for us to the, to, to unfold. Okay, uh, my understanding is that the oil moves from what about ten days ago. My understanding is that you know they've they've already taken down two hedge funds, but they they still haven't, still hasn't really been properly released. It still hasn't been properly unwound. It could it could take, it could take a while for that for those kind of positions and trades to to, to unwind itself. Okay, so as I said, don't don't think it's it don't think it's all don't think it's all over at the moment yet, ladies and gentlemen. All right, just just stay uh, stay vigilant. All right, stay vigilant on this. So. Um, with that all right with that okay looking at so yeah please look at that you know if, if you want to read more of it just uh, watch the video i did yesterday with dollar it was a, that was a that was a day of day for the dollars all right absolute day of days okay just there is a shortage of dollars in the world okay every man is dog is trying to get hold of them and it just it just it becomes like a vicious cycle it becomes an absolute vicious cycle and uh you know that has its impact on uh, sterling so um into kind of end of uh, January, uh, end of January, my view was that I thought that sterling would uh, would soften into the end of January until once we'd uh, done the old uh, the B word, uh, and then actually slowly we'd uh, we'd actually start to uh, we'd start to sterling would probably start to strengthen okay over the uh, um, over the period right, but it's uh, yeah that's you know the virus has completely and utterly the virus has completely and utterly changed that you can see for yourself there okay uh, sterling has been sold off drastically all right over the last week or two if you've been uh, short on that well then fair play to you well done all right that's um that's you know i'll take my hat off to you okay i've had a couple of little nibbles but nothing nothing major on that whatsoever 
Um, what's my view? Okay, longer term. Uh, my view is that if 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 those of you who remember the two thousand and eight crash, um, what you might remember is that actually before it, just before it, sterling got devalued the first. Okay, and then actually the dollar as well. It was almost as if the uh, let's say the uh, yeah the the the, the Ang Anglo-Saxon nations they just basically wanted to de devalue their currencies because they knew the pain that was coming. Um, I think this acts as a uh, us doing this or is allowing this to happen is a case of uh, it's a bit of a shock absorber for the pain to come. Who's going to uh, who's going to uh, who's going to hurt the most from um, from uh, from basically from from you know, a, a real devaluation in sterling? Uh, my view would be you, you're going to get two main parties. It's, it's going to be importers, but uh, is anybody going to have any money to buy anything from outside uh, uh, other than other than medical supplies? And uh, secondly, uh, holiday makers. So, um, but no one's going to be affording to go on holiday anyway, and uh, and there are no planes flying. So. Eh. It's you know it's a it's a case of you know the, the 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 impact on it might be might be too might be too bad okay so um um so yeah so I I I think that this has been allowed to happen I think this is a it's a it's a tool that they're using to allow it to devalue the sterling so that it make makes it competitive against other markets so um because what we've seen is well as you can see there and as I'll I'll switch across is that. Uh, as uh, as sterling has devalued in in some instances right euro has uh, euro has strengthened in some instances so um you can you know you can see what happened with euro sterling right back up at like kind of 92 94 okay so um that's probably changing today maybe that's because of Lagarde's comments uh, uh, that might even be something as simple as uh, i understand uh, michael barnier michelle barnier is, uh, has has um, declared himself to have the uh, the virus and stuff at the moment so if you just think about who he's been contacting and talking with and dealing with on a daily basis that that uh, will have a knock-on impact um as in the fact my my brother who works in the house of parliament he got redeployed out of the house of parliament yesterday to bristol so there's clearly uh, measures being taken to to effectively uh, um uh, what's the word to yeah to basically sort of spread people around whether that's uh, to keep them safe or whether to spread the virus you can you can make your own you can make your own decision on that but yeah euro had been a uh, strength in the case as the big euro dollar trade unwound you can see that actually effectively we had you know real euro strength and we're having that dollar weakness not any longer so if we now look at today euro is basically it's uh it's hit you it's hit lows we've not seen for about three years i think it is yeah back into sort of our kind of uh 20, 2016 2017 we've not seen there okay um if anybody wants to give me a a really good sensible sound uh reason why the euro should uh, should strengthen i i'm 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 all ears please please tell me personally i'm i can understand why how it has strengthened against sterling i can understand how it's strengthened against the com dolls all right against the aussie dollar kiwi dollar and canadian dollar right because they have just literally just been battered all right they have just been absolutely literally battered but you know you can see it's even against the yen here on the bottom left it's 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 you know it's scrappy okay it's scrappy and against swiss franc the the kind of what had been a just a great trend right short in euro swiss you know that's that's kind of getting towards the um uh, that's getting towards the end of it there okay so yeah euro has strengthened a bit but i don't i don't really particularly see any underlying fundamental reason to, for, for that to um for that to, to to happen i'm certainly i'm certainly not on board with it and uh yeah the dax is just well yeah you know just look at that once again if you've once again, if you were shorting DAX, well, fair play to you, you know, fair play to you and stuff. That's, um, you know, that's, uh, yeah, I take my hat off to you. Well done, well done, you and stuff. It's uh, that's all, uh, that's all particularly uh, uh, happy and good. Um, one of the uh, the, the major uh, uh, the big boys who's been battered, of course, has been uh, Aussie dollar, all right? And uh, I mean, Aussie Aussie's been getting battered for for a couple of years, but you can see this year it just accelerated, all right? It's just accelerated and it's been hitting you low. So Kiwi dollar with it as well, Canadian dollar, and the uh, and uh, yeah, the, the along with the oil, we'll have a look at that in a moment, okay? But it's a case of yeah every man and his dog every man and his dog has been battering the aussie dollar it's not really 
you know, once again, you don't need to be a rocket scientist to, to understand and realize why that's actually happened or occurred, because it's a, it's effectively it's a, it's you know proxy for proxy for China, and it has just been as China happened and, and raced away. Well, then invariably, you know, in terms of the, the the damage that it had there, well, then that's just had a huge knock-on impact to Australia. Also, Australia was a uh, it, it, its property was in a in, in a bubble. It hadn't it didn't it's not had a recession in what was it. Is it 20, 30, 40 years? Um, I think it's got a recession now. It's uh, it's coming. It's it's going to hit it. So um, it's going to be you know if uh, if any of you are thinking of buying a uh, a beach house on Bondi, uh, give it six months to a year. You might be in. You might be in with a uh, a chance there because I can see that I can see that uh, um, hammering that pretty hard. And uh, interestingly, along with that, gold. Now I have. Um, I had a, I had a bit of luck on gold. Okay, so uh, I was hoping to buy it around about fifteen seventy, fifteen eighty uh, a couple of weeks ago, and uh, I think I told some of you I'd made a decision I was going to buy gold. Got into my office, and uh, there was like a deluge of people coming at me with questions about this, that, what's going on, and I, and I didn't get my I didn't get my gold trade on, and then that about two hours later, that's when uh, Powell announced the uh, emergency interest rate cut, and uh, effectively oil. Uh, um, Gold jumped from about about fifteen ninety up to about well about sixteen sixteen fifty up to sixteen eighty within a couple of days and stuff. So I figured I I just missed that it was a bit grumpy, but then actually what you can see is the price action there has just fallen away on uh, gold. Um, uh, there's a, I think there's two reasons for that. Um, one, it's a case of you, some of you might remember from two thousand eight when everybody thought gold would shoot to the stars. The problem is for those big institutions if they're getting margin calls, you, they are literally closing any of their positive positions in order to effectively to basically to, to, to cover their positions to cover their losing positions so hence you know they might be making money in gold but gold just gets dumped because invariably they just need their cash and um, secondly thing is and this might be a bit this is a bit of a theory all right is that is a case of uh, the central banks okay they they don't want you buying gold okay and the big banks they don't want you buying gold and silver okay not until they and their mates are all uh, on board uh, my own view is that they actually need they need people to keep buying to keep buying treasuries okay to keep buying a uh, government debt first and foremost so uh, if you suppress the price of uh, gold it just means that uh, uh, government treasuries might look a bit more uh, attractive to, to, to people so um um, that's one of the reasons there, and and at the moment I, I am I, I am looking to buy gold. Okay, I'm going to look to take a piece of it, but but at the moment that price action isn't doesn't really doesn't really excite me. Okay, clearly you can see for some reason 1470 1470 is holding as big levels on here. Okay, um, but yeah, you know the, the kind of interesting for me is that you know monthly. All right, and I appreciate we're only what's that halfway two thirds of the way through the month. Not, I mean that is claim a huge big key reversal monthly key reversal at the moment okay on on gold so i'm kind of as i said i uh, uh you know fundamentally i'd like to be maybe hold a bit more gold in my uh sip but there's, there's nothing really there's nothing really there to to excite me all right it's there's nothing really there to excite me to get on board it right this right this moment but it is it is definitely on my uh definitely on my watch list and uh i know i spoke not many of you trade commodities, but if you uh, if you look at some of the commodities, okay. So, well, you know, the first one you've got to look at, of course, is uh, is oil. All right, so uh, yeah, you can see what's happened there, okay. You know, and interestingly, here I was talking about this was the start of the year when we had the uh, um, we had all the trouble in Iraq and Iran, and then it all sort of got uh, sorted uh, sorted out, and then we had a big key reversal there on the daily chart on Brent and on West Texas, and it's just literally been. Yeah, it's just been one-way traffic uh, ever ever since then. Okay, same with uh, as I said, same with West Texas, right? Uh, and we're getting down to twenty, getting down towards twenty dollars, all right, which is just yeah, amazing. But as I said, if if you look at all the other commodities, they have taken they've taken an absolute bath as well. I was interested in silver as well as kind of watching silver, but. I'm not watching it at the moment. Well, not in that way. So, you know, I thought maybe that uh, we might have a little bit of a, a silver opportunity. But, you know, what we got was, you know, we got that kind of monthly key reversal, double top there, and kind of like start to get a bit wary. And, and well, yeah, I didn't, I didn't expect, yeah, I didn't expect silver to, to completely collapse as it has done, uh, as it has done there. Okay. Uh, same, you know, palladium and platinum, they have been, you know, they've been, you know, platinum was just looked like, 
here we go breaking out of a I thought it was breaking out of a downward rent a downward wedge okay just nudging its way up but uh actually you can see there it puts in a one two three pattern there and then it just it shits the bed doesn't it just you know call it whatever you want all right okay it just rolls over and uh and and falls away and uh palladium which has been the stock market favorite all right if you just look at that boom look at that ladies and gentlemen right and it's back and it's down beneath that weekly 50 that has uh where's that gone from okay over the last month that's gone from high of uh, 28 2870 down at 1500 so that's left that's lost 1300 dollars in a month okay so um <clears throat> yeah well done if you were well done if you were well done if you were shorting that i wouldn't uh yeah it's a bit too spicy it's a bit too spicy even for uh even for me so um so there you go so um there you go i appreciate it i've done that about half an hour there already okay and i, I don't want it to, to go on for hours and hours the whole idea is maybe 20 30 minutes every uh, uh every every day all right at the moment and just if there's something particular of interest we'll, we'll focus on that if you've got something you want me to look at or if you've got a particular question shout out to me all right and uh, we'll do it but you know for those of you trading this afternoon i right, just you know i don't think there's anything major formal news coming out but you've just got to keep an eye on those uh, on those news wires if you are trading right you know just make sure that you are uh, uh, make sure that you are effectively um you know as i said uh, small position size wider stop losses okay and just uh, uh keep yourself keep, <clears throat> keep yourself sort of uh, very uh, nimble and agile for the uh, for the afternoon session as it uh, as it comes forward okay it's um i mean we didn't even really touch on us indices because well, you can see that for yourself but that's what we'll start with tomorrow all right there, there you go ladies and gentlemen if uh, thanks for uh, for joining us okay appreciate it it's a bit of a ramble there all right but we'll you know we'll get into a bit more of a bit more of a uh, uh, slick routine with that if you want to see the stuff i've done the dollar if you didn't see it send it to me and i'll send it on to you okay and uh, this is recording I'll, I'll put it up on the uh, i'll put it up on the thing soon enough and we can um, we can talk about that and uh, yeah i wish you all the best of success for your own trading over the next uh, well over the next session ladies and gentlemen thanks very much cheers Thanks, guys. Thanks, Kalpesh. Good to hear from you. All right. And Tom. One for the road, Tom. <laughs> Cheers. You're welcome, Charlie. Cheers. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>